what's going on welcome back to the channel and we're going to continue with the cab rehab series today i've got a quick project for you i wanted to add a few illuminated uh, coin buttons down by the coin door now these are going to be functioning buttons we're not going to be able to accept quarters obviously but i wanted to have um, some lights down there to kind of just set that off i think it's going to look really good so we're going to start by taking out the control panel and then it's going to be time to take a few measurements where the existing 25 cent logo is because we're actually going to drill through this panel to mount these switches. It's really important to get this measurement correct because you really want this to be centered. Now I took this button and did a little preliminary fitment to figure out where I wanted this. So this is going to be the best spot for my application. Take your hole saw, apply some pressure. Remember this is a thin panel so you don't need to really push on a lot and you'll see that once I break through uh, the whole saw will actually fall forward. That's something to be mindful of. Luckily it didn't do too much damage and the button that we're going to use to cover this hole is, is fairly large. It's going to cover up any kind of uh, janky edges that I have. Now because I'm tapping directly into the power supply I need a way to turn these lights on and off. So I'm going to add a small on off switch right here where the lock is on this decal. Now here's the actual back. You see you've got these little um, protrusions here on the back that kind of locate the buttons themselves. It's going to keep this uh, the buttons from twisting. So I press that in and you can see the indentation into the decal. And then I just mark that with the Sharpie. Then I switch to a smaller drill bit. And then you repeat the process for the second button. Alright, with all of our holes drilled, you can see how this button is going to attach, similar to control panel buttons or hat buttons. We're just going to sandwich the panel with this nut. Now the small control switch is going to be mounted in the same way. Uh, except we're going to push that from the inside out and then its capture nut is actually going to be on the front of the cabinet. Alright, now let's head into the cabinet and see what it's going to take to wire this thing up. I think what I want to try to accomplish is a removable wiring harness. And as always, I'm trying to keep this plug and play. So, we're going to actually tap into the AC power with another Y adapter, sort of similar to the one that we use for the marquee, except uh, this is just a splitter, so the ends are going to be the same. So you can have your main connection coming off the AC adapter, and continue that on to the PCB, and then what's remaining is going to be used to power our switches. And we're going to use an adapter with two terminals and allow us to break this out into plus and minus. Here's the actual switch itself. You can see the positive and negative they will fit into the buttons that we installed on the front of the cab. They'll go in at an angle and then twist to lock. Alright, so what we're going to do is take our negative leads on the left side of the switch and just daisy chain those together, take it back to our connector, and then we'll take the positive leads, break that through the switch, and then take that back. Okay, next up you're going to see me tinning some of these wire connections. Uh, I'm going to be soldering to the actual buttons themselves. Uh, this is not necessary. You can do just a, a crimp on fitting with a female spade connector and make your connections that way. That would be that would work just as fine. Um, this is just a method I'm, I wanted to use. All right, now it's time to add the switch to the circuit. It's going to be in line with the positive. Now, we could solder and heat shrink that connection, but instead I'm going to use some of these solder and seal wire connectors I picked up on Amazon. This is a 
all-in-one solution um, for those that don't maybe have a soldering iron or feel comfortable soldering but you want that good solid um, in connection this is going to basically be a piece of heat shrink tubing that incorporates a small piece of solder and you'll just connect the two wires together and then just use a lighter to melt the solder inside and obviously shrink that tubing it's really not even necessary to take the two pieces of wire and, and uh, splice those together you can just press those ends inside and then using the lighter we'll melt the piece of solder fusing those two pieces of wire together and then obviously shrinking the tubing makes for a really solid connection and no soldering iron required so for those of you that are a little bit intimidated by soldering uh, maybe you're just not comfortable with it this is a great way to connect wires end to end and then we make the final two terminal connections on the 12 volt adapter and this will give us a completed wiring harness All right, with all that work done, let's stick our wiring harness back into the arcade machine. Go ahead and put these switches in at a slight angle, locking them into place. Take our switch, place that through the hole. We're going to secure that on the front with the uh, button cover. I'm going to add a little bit of this electrical tape, um, the fabric tape that I used in other videos to kind of give us just an added layer of protection, keep these wires together, and uh, kind of gives it a little bit of a finished look. Now taking the Y adapter that I showed you before, we're going to go ahead and connect that to the PCB, completing that circuit, and then we're going to connect our custom wiring harness to the Y connector, and that's going to power the switches. All right, let's head back to the front of the cabinet and reinsert the J panel. And then next up, the control panel. And let's see if all of our hard work paid off. All right, that's going to do it for this episode, but tell me, what do you think about this modification? Was it unnecessary? Sure, but most modifications are. It's all about the aesthetic. It looks really good. And when you step back and you take a look at the entire arcade, I'm pretty proud of what I've done so far.